So now we're back, and I basically introduced our villainous Irene, who, as soon as her husband dies here at E Day, she's actually the one saying E Day Ho Day Ho Christos in order to get you know everybody to want to worship icons again instead of the real God. So that's why she's being mocked. Don't believe her. Is how this section ends, and it ends at 794 A.D. Now, what I didn't cover is what about Leo himself, Leo the Fourth, during his five years, starting here and ending here. What he do? Well, he was like his grandfather and his father before him. He was into Bible doctrine. I did say that much. What I didn't say, and I need to say, is like his grandfather and father. He was used to cut short the days of the Arab invasions. He was a little cleverer in certain respects, because obviously God prospered the empire during this time. And what he did was like, okay, we're, we don't want to incite the Arabs into attacking us. All right, we just don't want them in our town, in our territory, in our empire. So he decided, you know, um, Let's just do the de minimis that we got to do to keep them at bay. And the one big thing with the Arabs, you always have to know, and it's an aphorism actually, um, is that they're money hungry. They are always money hungry. There's this old aphorism I learned at 40 some years ago in college that Arab negotiations go like this. First the Arab steals your stuff, and then he negotiates with you as to the price to buy it back. So th if they don't have to kill, they won't. Just give money. And since in a lot of cases, especially on a larger scale, it's cheaper to give them money than to fight and kill them. That's what Leo started to do. Is he, 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 he fortified everything. He really did hold them at bay. But it wasn't like they went out to destroy them. It was just keep them at bay. If you can buy them off, buy them off. And if you have to fight him, fight him. But basically he reverted to a defensive position because his dad and his granddad had already done enough fighting to create, as it were, a buffer territory so that they would be held at bay. And there were certain things that happened that, I don't know, some people wouldn't call it that, but I would call it something like a miracle as to how the Arabs were held off. Because you have to understand, this was the time of Arab expansion. All right, They were expanding all over. They were all over the underbelly of Europe, the northern part of Africa. They had taken over the Middle East. And Byzantine, the Byz Byzantine Empire kept its priests there. But it pretty much gave up rule to the, to the Arabs. All right? So they're, you know, the Byzantine Empire is kind of the cause of the problem of the Arabs staying there. They didn't wipe them out the first time. It's kind of like the Exodus. God said to the Israel, as soon as the Exodus happened, I want you going into the territory. Very first year of the Exodus, God said to, to Israel, I want you going into the territory and just wipe out everybody that's there. And the reason why he gave that order is because everybody that's there had the same kind of practice of just killing people and raping people and stealing from people and they were disrupting the entire economy that was going between the three continents not to mention the fact that they were rude, crude, nasty and horrible people and I know that you know a lot of people say oh but a lot of innocent kids were killed you're not innocent by the time you're seven if you grow up that way I, I mean just go look at the videos on YouTube about kids teaching about Arabs teaching their two-year-old kids to stab Jews all right, stab, stab, stab. Search on that in YouTube, and you, they they post the fathers, the mothers post live videos of them strapping bombs on their kids, of teaching their kids to stab. When you're two, three, four, five, six, seven years old, you don't know any better. That's true. But what you do know, you don't know how bad it is. What you know. You got the Hamas bunny. Go look at that on YouTube. The Hamas bunny is a children's program 
that's aired in Palestine for children teaching them to kill Jews and then you have the the interview that uh, Diane Sawyer had with a couple of Palestinian kids I remember I don't remember the name of the program but I want to say it was back in 2005 or so where she's interviewing them about what they learned in school today and they proudly told her they learned to make a bomb see when you're five six seven years old you're the product of what your parents teach you and that's all you know so that's what you do alright so if your parents have taught you to kill and you're seven years old you think oh I must kill so no they're not innocent I mean they're innocent in the sense that they don't really understand how bad what they want to do is they don't have any moral values they've been taught a wrong set of values so when you're seven you're gonna just you can't just adopt a seven-year-old kid who's been raised that way he'll think the first thing he's supposed to do is set your apartment on fire alright so God in his mercy and wisdom knows this and he's gonna have to, you know truth be free or it's not truth he knows they're gonna grow up this way so if he ordered the Israelites in the exodus to go and to just kill everybody alright sometimes he made exceptions but usually not they're going to go to heaven right away because they're too young to know right and wrong. And that's, you know, you see that from David when David's firstborn dies. He says, I'll go to him, but he won't go to me. You can search on that verse. Search on those words. Find the verse. It's somewhere in Samuel. I'll go to him, but he won't go to me. All right? So they go to heaven. Well, that's a really good thing because how else are they going to go to heaven? Because their minds are so screwed up by the time they're seven years old alright and same thing was true for North Vietnamese kids that's how they were raised they were raised to be criminals and when you're seven you, you don't have any kind of defense against such bad values alright well that's what's starting to happen here under Irene and what hadn't happened until Irene is that you know Leo the fourth just like Constantine the fifth and Leo the third before him they held those Arabs at bay and those Arabs were just as bad then as they are now they are criminal people now there's always exceptions but they're really screwed up okay now if you got the right kind of upbringing you're not going to be screwed up if you got the wrong kind of upbringing you're going to be screwed up so it isn't just the Arabs, but it's it's historically true of them. All right. So Christ is basically saying here, starting here, to save all the flesh, you got to keep those Arabs out. So by Leo the Fourth Day, keeping the Arabs out was a mostly defensive movement because his dad and his granddad had set it up from a you know more offensive position. So all he had to do was keep together what his dad and his granddad had set up. So that's what he chose to do. So that's his, like, meaning. So now look at the cuteness of this. e day. Look. Yeah. That's when our boy Leo the Fourth dies. And who's he looking at? God. Everybody else is looking at him being dead. And Irene takes advantage of that because she wants everybody to look at her. So she's saying, oh, the Christ, over the next seven years, for icons. And she actually disparages her husband. All right, she either instigated the lie or she took advantage of it, one of the two, take your choice. That, oh, he wanted those, wanted to wear the crown jewels at Hagia Sophia. Why anybody would buy that lie, I don't know. But if you're negative to God, you'll buy anything. Look at what happened with electing Trump. You cannot be a Christian and using 1 John 1 9 and vote for Trump. Can't. So apostates elected him. And this is the same kind of apostasy happening back here when in 780 when Leo dies. The same kind of apostasy there as is happening right now in the United States. And you'll notice that the distance is the same. Okay, look, 57. All right, we got 780 oh, minus 57. 723, that was right here. This is where Leo the Third. he's just gotten into power. He starts, and by the time Leo the Fourth dies, 
57 years have elapsed. That's called vote. That's a vote critical number in the meter. Okay, Moses first used it that way, and it keeps on being used that way all the way through to Revelation. Okay, vote critical, and Byzantium is not voting the right way. So that's why the warning is so important. Don't believe it when some idol is being par you know, paraded through the street saying, Oh, this is the Christ. Fall down and worship. Oh, 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 oh. bow down, bow down. Which is what she started as soon as her husband died. So what you see here during these 16 years, okay, what you see here is a profound change of direction in the Byzantine believers who decided, oh yeah, icon veneration is a good thing. Now there was always opposition and there were always the iconoclasts and they remained the problem for her, which means that there were some faithful left, which brings us back to this verse up here, but because of the elect being elected, he, Christ, cut short the days of the, you know, the eclipses, the tribulation of the Arabs hitting them. And he used the rulers to do that. And then, of course, they get their prosperity during that time. And they start to think, oh, icons delivered us, which is a big problem in Byzantine history. They were real fond of saying whenever, there, there were a lot of sieges of Constantinople, okay, and they were really fond of saying, well, we just waved the robe, claiming it to be the robe, of Mary Theotakos, you know, we had Mary's robe from back in the first century AD and it's miraculously preserved and we just waved it at the enemy and they went away. Alright, so, you know, that kind of evil grows in prosperity, so that's what happened. You know, that's what, what happened in the United States too. So that's why this sudden switch to negative to Bible and positive to idols went forth calling an idol a Christ and she's making herself a Christ by doing this and it's real important you know that because now we're going to get to her death okay so you, you, you get you get this much so by 794 she's converted to everybody and she's managed to you know pogromize or otherwise discredit the people who really want a Bible and she's feeling real good about herself meanwhile she has a kid after her Leo the Fourth dies, okay, she has a kid named Constantine the Sixth, who is technically the emperor during this time, but he's like ten years old. So she says, "Well, I'm the regent for him, so she's actually running the empire." Where have we heard that before? All right, but he's not ten years old by. 794 AD okay he's older now he wants to rule on his own without her and during that time okay during this this the same period the people who were the iconoclasts who wanted to go back to the Bible they found something of a you know hero in him but he's real young so when he becomes of age he starts fighting with his mommy and she not like that. And there's something of a civil war that goes on during this time. See, me bestuti. Don't believe it. Don't believe in her. Believe in him. Okay, but everybody's got to decide that so it ends up being something of a civil war. Alright, so by 794, remember you always add 30 to get the AD. By 794, this thing has really come to, you know, like front and center in their politics. Alright, so what word does the Bible use to explain that? Oh, the rise word. E ger de son tai. Tai. You always sort of swallow the I at the end of the A. Ah. I. I. A. You know, I. So, e go de son tai. When you say they, you don't say it. So the scholars differ over this, but I maintain what the classical scholars say. It's not. You don't have a lot of breath there. 
say. No, it's te. Te. There's no breath. You just put your tongue at the back of your front teeth and you say te. You try. It's it's like a th, but there's no breath. Te. Te. Te son te. All right. So you're you're making the te sound with only with the your your tongue at the behind your front teeth. Te. All right, but no breath. No. Th you're not breathing through your teeth. You're not pushing the air through your teeth. Te. Okay. So air. E. Ger. Te. Son. Tai. Now, that means to rise. Iro. Take Iro. Okay. E, ge, te, son, tai. Five syllables. So, 794, that covers the next five years. Alright, so 794, that means in the next five is 795, 96, 97, 98, 99, 799. Okay, well, our boy Constantine the Sixth doesn't live that long. He's, he goes, so this is 64, so this is 65, so we say 95, 95, 96, 97. He dies right at the day sound. Now that's kind of cute, okay, because there are several words that come to mind to a Greek person when they just see those two letters, te. And they, the writers of the original scriptures that we have, they use this as an abbreviation. It's Theos for God. Telema for will. Alright, God's will. It was God's will that Constantine the Sixth died right there. He was fighting his mother his whole life. He dies young. And it's kind of suspicious the way he dies. Because she wants to be in power, so it doesn't matter. Even if she sacrifices her own son. Now he had his own, as it were, fans. His own loyal people behind him. But it was back and forth who was loyal to him. Who agreed with him. And it, it, the reason why they went to him is because he was the actual legal emperor. And she was in effect usurping his power. In the name of him being too young. And the people who backed him went sort of back and forth about backing him. Leo the Fourth up here had extracted a promise from the groups of, you know, the army and other groups around uh, Byzantium that they would only recognize Constantine the Sixth once he came to power versus the other siblings that he ended up having because his dad, his dad's third wife, ended up having five kids. All right, so he wanted his kid recognized, and they did. They, they went with Leo the Force recommendation. But, you know, it's back and forth. And if you get money or you get goodies or you're threatened or something, your loyalty will falter. And that's what was happening here when he dies. All right. So once he dies at day, which is kind of a compliment to him, Sontai. Sontai is a sort of like, um, is a compound noun. And the Sontai ending makes you think of I mean, meaning to be, being, okay? So there was a being, there will be, there will rise up technically is the, what the word would say. What the text says is there will rise up, therefore, false Christs and false prophets. Alright, so if I read it in Greek, in my bad Greek, but not so bad, you can't get the cadence. Okay? And that covers the period from 794 to 810. Thankfully, Irene doesn't live that long. She lives until 803, which is right here. Isn't that cute? In the middle of Pseudo Christoi. You see the wit? She was the one that started the icon thing with, Oh, this is the Christ. Yeah, but it's not the real Christ. You're not supposed to believe in him. So, 
you know, God's the only one who can kill you. So she dies right in the middle of pseudo Christoi. Pseudo false anointing. Okay, isn't that cute? It's really cute. She's a pseudo Christ, yes, and she dies in the middle of pseudo Christ. So if you were alive and you were reading the Greek and you actually knew this meter stuff and you're reading this at that point, the year she dies, 803, you're like, or 802, late 802, some, some say August of 803. It's a little, it's a little dicey exactly when, because she gets thrown out of power in 802. All right. So she gets, because she gets thrown out of power here at pseudo. And that's even funnier, but I'll get to that in the next increment. But she actually dies here, Cree. So she's falsely anointed, all right, and that's where she dies. And she dies in a mo in a uh, convent because she gets thrown out of power by the next guy, who's also a pseudo, <laughs> and and he he exiles her to a convent, and so she ends up really dying as a nun at Cree. See, if you knew the meter of this while you were living in Byzantium at the time, or a few years prior, and especially afterwards, and you go to look at the meter, it, see how meaningful it is? See what a satirical commentary it is? And aren't you learning doctrine from it? The doctrine of the false Christ. The doctrine of, don't you use some kind of icon as a replacement for me? Read my word. That's the real me. See, God is in his word. Remember? God is in his word. And every time Corias is used in Matthew, it stands for a Bible person. Carrying the word, translating the word, finding the word, teaching the word, and trying to reform the, the apostasy that's there in his own area of the world, wherever he is. Yeah, and that was what was happening in Byzantium too. But they weren't listening. They went for false Christ. So the lady who sponsored that dies right here as a false Christ. Now, if you were reading Bible and having second thoughts because everybody around you was talking about icon worship and you knew this, wouldn't that help you live your life against them? I'll come back in the next increment.